In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of assertiveness at work and all the key things that you need to know. Assertiveness is a communication style in which you can express your feelings and your needs and your desires in a clear, direct and respectful way. Assertiveness is essential for good relationships, effective communication, strong problem solving and robust decision making. It is vital in the world of work. We often understand assertive communication in the context of its two principal alternatives, passive and aggressive communication. However, there is no real sense in which assertive is somehow an in-between happy medium. Assertiveness is its own style and both passive and aggressive communication styles are unhelpful, not only at work, but in your private and social life too. Passive communication styles avoid conflict and express feelings, desires, needs indirectly. Often, people with a passive style of communication won't even say what they really need, which is kind of lack of respect for themselves, for their own feelings and for their own needs. This can lead to people becoming overlooked and undervalued, and as a result, they can become resentful of the people around them. Aggressive communication is disrespectful of other people. It disregards the needs of others and is often intimidating and sometimes even physically violent. Aggressive communication can lead to conflict and damaged relationships. It can cause stress in the people around the aggressive communicator and can sometimes lead to the need for disciplinary action. However, in expressing yourself clearly and respectfully, assertive communication demonstrates respect both for yourself and for other people. To my mind, respect is the key to understanding aggressive, passive and assertive communication styles. It should therefore go without saying that there are some huge benefits to assertive communication at work. These include improved communication and better relationships, enhanced problem solving and increased job satisfaction, engagement and commitment to work. This leads to great self-confidence and self-respect, which can open up more and better opportunities for advancement. And all of that can reduce stress and anxiety and therefore problems with ill health, absenteeism and retention problems. So, what are some of the key attributes of assertive communication? First, I'd say, is clarity and the avoidance of ambiguous and therefore perhaps confusing communication. Next comes confidence, which is often conveyed with posture, tone of voice and the choice of words, but also can include expressions and gestures as well. Next is evident respect for other people's distinctiveness, their rights, their ideas, their feelings, their needs and their priorities. Assertive communication style is also very strong on listening because not only is this respectful, but it's the best way to understand what other people want and need and it's the best way, therefore, to prepare to respond. Assertive communication also includes the need for constructive feedback. People who communicate assertively are good at responding to what they see and hear and otherwise observe and relaying that in a respectful manner. And finally, another key to good respectful communication is the ability to say no in a polite, courteous and appropriate manner. Saying no to things that are not right for you respects yourself. Doing so in a way that is respectful of others, is assertive. So how can we build the confidence to 
to communicate assertively in the workplace. Firstly, we need to acknowledge and understand the cultural norms within the place we work, both the organisation and the country or society within which it's set, but also understanding the cultural norms of the people around us. Assertive is assertive as a universal human approach. However, there are different ways that it manifests in different cultures. And sometimes something that might be assertive in your culture may seem a little disrespectful, slightly aggressive in someone else's culture, or vice versa. So understand the people around you. However, you have a right to set boundaries, to be prepared to say no when the time is right. This may require some role playing and some practice. Get practice at thinking about scenarios where it would be appropriate to say no and try out different ways to say no that will leave people recognising that you're doing so from a point of integrity, you're doing so in a courteous, polite and respectful manner. Understand the things that are holding you back from feeling confident in being assertive. These are sometimes called limiting beliefs. And the first step to addressing them is to recognise them in yourself. And then the next step is to challenge them. To recognise that those are only beliefs that you hold, yet they are holding you back. Change those beliefs. When you do find yourself in a situation where you feel almost like you want to be either aggressive or passive, then focus on the issue at hand rather than the person. It's much easier to be assertive about a situation or an issue or a thing or a process than it is about emotions and people. Therefore, it can be much easier to get good at being assertive by practising your assertive communication in low consequence, low priority, low stakes situations. When you do feel under a little pressure, practice active listening. Spend more time listening and then pause before responding. Take your time to think through the options you have. Choose the right one. That active mental intervention between hearing something and responding will give you the time to take a breath and choose to communicate assertively. To add to that, I have a few simple tips that you can use to help you be assertive in the moment. With your verbal communication, make sure that you use I as often as possible to take responsibility for your feelings, your needs, your desires and preferences. If you use the word you, it can sound accusatory and therefore either whiny, you did that, or aggressive, you did that. If you use I, that means that you are confident in stating your own position. Secondly, be clear, specific, precise and concise. Say what you mean, say precisely what you mean using specific language and say no more than you need to. Assertive communication has that confidence to stop when you've said what you need to say. And finally, control your posture and your tone. Keep looking straight at the person you're speaking with. Stand or sit square onto them. Look them in the eye and speak loudly enough so that it comes across clearly and confidently. In your non-verbal communication, maintain good eye contact, but not so long that it freaks people out. Keep your posture upright and symmetric. Use open body language rather than closing up and project confidence with strong gestures and inviting facial expressions. I have a whole course on this platform on personal impact with a number of videos on things like assertiveness that you can refer to to get more information. I'll put links in the description. Having watched this video and listened to these ideas, Try to find a couple to put into effect in your daily work life. Notice 
if you find yourself slipping towards aggressive or passive communication styles. And pause. Think about what the issue is about, how you can best communicate your point of view, your needs, your preferences, your desires and your emotions in a clear, concise, confident and assertive way. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be making loads more great management courses videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of them. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, keep learning.